Okay, I want to do a video on this access module to SAM and Magic project. I've done this assignment five times now, and something has crashed. Usually, my recording, I don't know why I keep losing the sound. Um, I've had all kinds of problems with this. So, anyway, when you go and start the assignment, you're going to download both these files the instructions here and the deal. So, I've downloaded the instructions, I click on the database, and what it does is save file and then it goes into my downloads. So, once it's in my downloads, I always take and copy, and there's the instructions that I saved. And I take both these, well, I wouldn't need to insert, but I cut these out of here. Then go into my documents and have a folder, Access Chapter 2, so I don't get confused with Chapter 1, and paste these in here. And you'll see they're already in there because I did this once. Replace files with destination. So, yeah, I need to move this folder. I don't know why that started. But anyway, once I did that, now I need to go in and rename this database here. So I need to rename this and put a 2 behind the name. Now you can hit Enter. Now I can open this database, enable content, and the first thing I do is look at this grading info and make sure it has my name in there. If this file wasn't there, my name wasn't there, I would re-download that again. I've had to do this a ton of times. So anyway, I already have the instructions open. They're over on another screen. And so as we go in here and start this, we'll see that, you know, it talks about checking your grading info. Anyway, we're a rural health associate. The first thing we do is build a query and look for all the letters K and last name. And there's only like nine steps, but they're quite a bit of work. So let's go through this and get started. So, like I said, the first one here, when we open to create a query, we always use query design. Now we'll use query wizard only for cross-tab queries. So when I go in here, it would help if I'd had family table highlight, I'd grading info table, and that's what's here. But anyway, I can go in here and choose what I want. So I want the family table, and I double click that and that puts that in there. And I close this. And now I think I probably do these in my sleep without having to. Anyway, once family ID, last name. <laughs> I have did this so many times, you would not believe it. And then the state. Now, we go down here in last name, and what's the ones that start with K's? And that's where most students make a mistake. They put just the letter K, and you don't want to do this. But you run this, you get nothing. Why didn't I get anything? Well, there's no last names with just the letter K. What we have to do is we have to use a wildcard character. So we put K and then asterisk. And the asterisk means I don't care what's after letter K. Just look for all of them that start with K. So there we get the three deals. So once we have that, now we can go up and save that. We're going to name this capital K Families. And you want to spell this right. I missed that one one time. So I'm going to spell it as a query name. And I can close that. Step number two, open the birthday query. So when I come down here to queries, open the birthday queries. Just a quick note, if these queries weren't here, I've seen this one happen to students too, is they'll be in the view up here how they're, you know, how they have different views there's custom views or whatever and you know i like object type but they'll go in here and you know only have tables so you only see tables you can change the view in here so be careful that you know you want all access objects and so anyway now we have this birth date open obviously to do any modification to it we have to go in design view and what they want us to do on this is any of them that are female so i'm going here now i have to know how the form of the female was and luckily i know that they only use the letter f if it was female, and I type the word female there, I'd find no records. And then they want a birth date of greater than 1 slash 1 slash 1980. Now, real fast before I run this, what am I talking about here is that's why I think this is the easiest test. I can open the patient's table. And I can go down here and look. And as I said, gender, I can see they use the capital letter F. And then all the ones born after 1980, well, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and I can actually count how many records there is. When I run this birth date, so I go up here to run this, I can see how many I get, and does it make sense? So that's what you want to ask yourself. Yes, these are all after 1980, and these are all female. Okay, the next thing I want to do is we have to set this as medium date. So when I go to design here, I have to go to this field here and change the properties of this field. There's a couple different ways of doing it. You can hit property sheet up here. I right click in here and go to properties. Either way would do it. And then over here under formatting, we can choose medium date. Now be careful, you have to be in date of birth. If we tried to do that on gender, went over here to formatting, you'd see there's no medium date or no formatting because it's not a field. So and we want to make sure you're in this field when you do the medium date. Now I can run that, see how the dates change the format of them, and now I can save that. And I close this table I was showing you. Step three, cross-tab query. So this is the one where we go to create, we use the query wizard because the cross-tab query is right here and it walks us through the steps of what we need. So we say, okay, now before I do that, usually it tells you what table and then once it on the family table, you'll see a lot of patients table. So when I say okay here, 
it's going to pop up these tables anyway and i can switch if you don't see tables you might be in queries so be careful of that but i want tables i want family so i double click that to put the family in now it's going to ask me what do you want for row headings and it tells us it wants the county for the row headings and then <clears throat> when we go to next it wants the state as the column headings so states across the column headings and counties across the row headings. <clears throat> And it wants this done on income and average. Now, if you screw any of that up, you can go back and check them. You know, I'm just hitting this back button. So I want to make sure, you know, what values do you want at the row headings? Like I said, it was county. And the column headings was the state. And when we go in here, it's income and average. And now when we go to name here, they want a family cross tabs. So that is fine. We go finish. And that's what that looks like. Okay, step four, export the professional staff table. This is the one you have to be careful with. You have to have this professional staff selected before we ever do this. We go to external data. There's import and export. We're using the export Excel. We've got to go to where our database lives. So I'm going to my documents, 110 homework, access chapter two. Now you won't see that database. Oh, I got to delete this out of there. I did this before. Like I said, I've did this countless times. Anyway, we go in this access chapter two and I go save that there. Just leave the name what it is. It says not to do any of the um, export first without formatting your layout to the same folder. So I don't have to worry about checking any boxes. Don't want to do that. I do have to save the export steps and they want it called export professional staff. That is fine. So I'm going to save this export. Okay. And that should be it. Let's see if I get it wrong again. Step five, create a query based on family table. So simply I go to create, query design, go to family table. Oh, close this property sheet popped up. That's the beep here. Okay, so I have the family table here that includes family ID, last name, and state. And then income fields. And I don't see income fields. And that's why they always tell you to pull these down before you ever start. And then income fields. So I got family ID, last name, state, and income. They want this income to be greater than 40000 So when you're doing money, you do not want to put a dollar sign because Access would not know what greater than a dollar sign was. So we don't put in commas or decimals or anything. We just put the numbers. So greater than 40000 is all we do there. We run that. Make sure all their income's above 40000 We see it is. Okay. So this one here, we're going to. Create to save the query as family income. So I name this family income. Okay, and close that. Step six open the average income query. So there's average income query here. Okay, and then add a total row to the query and calculate the average income group by state. So I need to go in design view. Over here, they want this total row. So I go up here, I hit total. That puts total row in. And what else did it want? It wants to add a query to, to total row to the query and calculate the average income group by state. So I've come here to income. And I want to pull this down. I want average. I'm going to leave a group by state, but I want the average income. And is that all I have to do? Income group by state. Yep. So I'm going to run this just to make sure each state has the average income. So that looks right. So I can close this, save it. Yes. Seven, open the high income query. So open this high income query. Add the county field to the query. So in here, it wants us to add the county field immediately following state. A couple different ways you can insert that. I always just build the, what I want. So over here in this one, I'm going to add the county field. Then I'm going to click once with this little black down arrow. It highlights that. I let go. And now I hold down my mouse and I can move that over behind state. So it wants to make sure. Okay, open the highway income, add the county field to the query, immediately following state field. And then I need to sort the records into its descending order by income. So I got to come over here to income, hit descending. So make sure it's descending order by income. And then to display only the top 5%. Make sure it's 5%, not 5%. So is the result. So it wants to make sure that we have the top 5% on the records. So run the query. So that is the top five. I swore last time I had two of them in there. Okay, so we close this, save it, yes. So I did it right. Step eight, create a query that joins the clinics and professional tables. So when I go to create, 
jQuery design. I just need to add them to tables, which is clinics, and then professional, which was the other one, professional staff tables. So as soon as I put them in, they're joined. And so if we pull this down, we'll see that they both have clinic ID names, which join them. They both have the same field name. Anyway. Once we do that, and it doesn't matter which order we put these in because we can move these around on either side, which is the order of the fields that we put in. So when this would create a query fresh stuff, we include the clinic name. So I got to find the clinic name, put that first. Then the first name, last name, and position fields. Okay. In the query results, sort the record sending order by clinic name and then position. So when I go to clinic name, I want that ascending order. And then position is the next one and put that in ascending order. So I run these, you'll see it has the clinic's name and then position, doctor becomes before nurse practitioner becomes before physics assistant. So I just check to make sure it makes sale. Now they want me to save this. When I go in here and hit save, they want me to call this clinics dash staff with the query name. Make sure I spelled that right, clinics dash staff. Okay, close that. The next one, they want me to rename the doctor's query, so I don't even have to open it. I just go over here and right-click. In fact, you can't rename it when it's open. So I have to right-click on this, go to rename. And then they want me to take off the S and put doctor info. So I-N-F-O, and then hit enter. So just that easy, change the name of it. And that was step nine. Now, they want me to save any open deals and compact repair. So we go to file here. We go to info, compact and repair database. If this ever crashed on you, it says it can't compact repair, just close the database down, open it back up, and redo that step again, and it'll do it. Anyway, I am now done. I close that. Close this. I go here to open up the deal, and I put it in my documents. That's why I put it in the deal, because this has to be careful. When I go in here, CS101 homework, I'm looking for the Access Chapter 2, and that's the one I submitted today. Submit it for grade. Great summary report. Now, many of you, when you open this, I got to keep this. You got to go and open this up. You can go to downloads, or I could have clicked it right there and open it, but it's in my downloads, that report. So many of you are turning this in for your grade. I do not want this file for the grade. You open up this grading report, and you take a snip of this. Now, I freaking missed 11 again, and I know exactly probably right where it was. Oh, I knew there was two records. So I'm going to do this query again. Open the high income query, add the county field to the field query, fill in the state field, send the order by income slate, only top 5% records, reduce, save the query. So the high income query should contain the field name county, income field to send the order. So I'm going to close this down. I'm going to go back into my documents, go back in here, open this back up, open my database. Okay. And go to the high income table, rebuild this, and go back through these steps again. Very careful. Sometimes it's just you, you'll fix one thing and it'll blow up another. That's a bad thing about this. So let me go in here and make sure I got this. So open the high income, add the county field to the query, immediately following the state field. Oh, it doesn't have the county field in there. I swore I put it in there, but let's go in here and put the county field in. And then I'm going to move this. I clicked on it. Now move it over here so it's in front of there. Maybe I didn't save this or something. Now sort the records in descending order by income. So I got to go here, descending order by income. Maybe I totally missed this step. Um, display only the top 5%. And now run that. There it is. Two records. I missed that county field. That's why I only had one record. I should have looked that closer. So I knew last time I did that two records. So I close that, save this, yes. Close this database down. Now when I go in here, and this is what I took me a couple days to do this because I couldn't, I'd close this and I'd go to restart. It wouldn't let me restart it. So I have to close this down, go in and restart again. And then click start. Go back in here and upload my file one more time. It's still in the same folder, so that was easy enough. Hit submit. Get my grading summary. Now, before I get my grading summary, I want to go delete my last one. So I'm going to go into downloads and delete this report out so I don't get confused about which one I'm doing. So I'm going to go back here, go to grading summary report, keep this. You see, I got two of them down here, and I want to open the last one. And I don't really have to go to oh, grading table. I'm going to go down to grading report. I don't have to go enable content. But anyway, I'm going to grading report. 
And this is what I need you to do right here. You're going to take a snip of this. Now I keep the snipping on my the tool toolbar, but you can go down here, start, type S N I P. And for those of you guys that want that on your toolbar, all you have to do is right click on the snipping tool and say pin to my toolbar. Anyway, with this open, you go in here new and you take a snip of the data here, it shows the name and that. I don't want a snip of this whole thing. Let me do this again. So I go in here and do a new deal. Many of you are going in here and doing something like this too, where you're taking a great big picture. Well, it's really hard, and this looks big on the screen, but this gets tiny on my screen when I go to get your grades. So yeah, when you snip this, please be careful just to take and go new, and then you start right here at the top. So I've got Simon's name, my name, and my score. Anyway, go save that, and I always put it, well, you've seen me do that enough times. I always put it in my junk folder. In fact, I have even on the desktop, I have a junk folder. In my pictures, I have a junk folder. I have junk folders anywhere. In pictures here, junk, and I always save it with the name of today's date score. Today, I have to be doing this on 11 underscore 4. Even though assignment was due yesterday, or the day before, 21. So I put today's date. Why is that? So I know which one I'm turning in in my head. So when I go into my assignments here, and I sign in, then I'll know which one to upload. When I go to the, you know, go into my pictures, go in the junk folder, I'll look for the one I did today, and I'll put it in the right box. Anyway, hopefully that will help you with this assignment. You'll be able to figure this out. So.